We welcome you to the Church of Restoration this morning in the presence of the Lord. Because in the presence of the Lord, there's fullness of joy. And we declare that the presence of God is in this church. The presence of God is flowing even as you're watching online, wherever you are sitting. The presence of the Lord is with you. I declare it and I decree it. And I want to read you Psalm 46 this morning. God is our refuge and strength and very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, even though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though its waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with its swelling, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High God. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her just at the break of dawn. The nations raged and the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice. The earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Church of Restoration, wherever you are, wherever you're watching from, the God of Jacob is with you. The God of Jacob with you today. All things are possible because the God of Jacob is in our presence. Hallelujah. As we watch the service, I pray that your life will never be the same again and that the God of Jacob will rest on you and your household and your family in the mighty name of Jesus. We give God praise in this house. Enjoy the service with us. We welcome you and we love you. In Jesus' name, amen.
name of our Lord and Savior. It is, indeed, it is indeed a privilege to be standing here this morning and to give thanks to our Lord and Savior. God has been faithful and he still is. And this morning as I've been asked to do the offering, I want to say to each one of us that we are blessed with the goodness of God. You know, God has given us so much and he is requiring of us to give back to him this morning. As his word says in Deuteronomy 8, 18, it says, It is I, your God, who have given you the ability to create wealth. And it is our duty to give back to him. It is our duty to look after his house. And this morning, I want to urge each one of us, we all find ourselves in different situations. We find ourselves in different places at this time of our lives, but it is our duty to honor God with everything that we have, whether it be our wealth, our monies, our time, we have to honor God with it. You know, if you read in Deuteronomy 8, it says that the people, they forsook God and they forgot what he had done for them. They worshiped other gods. And that is why we find ourselves in the place that we find ourselves in today. A pandemic. Because people have turned away from God. And I want to urge each one of us that we need to turn back to God. And give back what belongs to him. Give back what God deserves. He deserves our best. And today, you know, you're not giving money into a church into a ministry, you're not giving money to the pastor or to the apostle or to the church members. You are honoring God with your tithes. You are looking after his house today. He requires that of each one of us. So let us examine our hearts and find out where we are. If we do not have money, let us give our time. Let us give of ourselves to the gospel of Jesus Christ. There are so many who are dying out there who are lost without hope. It is our duty to give of our time and to minister to the world, a broken world. So this morning, without further ado, please take out your offering and let us ask God to bless it in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you this morning. We thank you, Lord God, that you are a God who has given us the ability to earn money, to create wealth. You have given us health, Lord God. And help us today, Lord Jesus, to honor you with whatever we have. Help us, oh God, not to look 
at what the next person is doing or what somebody else is doing or saying. But help us, oh God, to be focused upon you so that you might bless us, Father. Father, we need your blessing. You have made a covenant with us, Lord God, that you will keep us from all harm if we honor you. So this morning, we want to honor you with our substance. We honor you today, Lord Jesus. Lord God, bless those who do not have today. And Father, those who have given this morning, Lord, who will give, bless them, Father, with a double portion, Father God, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Good morning, church. If anyone had a birthday this morning, or during the four months period, a happy birthday, and may God really bless you, and that you will have a splendid time in his presence. Okay. Heavenly Father, we pray that you will bless those who have a birthday and an anniversary, my God. I pray that the presence of God will be upon your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And I'll read from Matthew 26, verse 26 to 29. As they were eating, Jesus took some bread and blessed it. Then he broke it in pieces and gave it to his disciples. Here is the bread. Saying, take this and eat it, for this is my body. And he took a cup of wine and gave thanks to God for it. He gave it to, his, to them and said, Each of you drink from it. This is my blood which confirms the covenant. Some manuscripts say the new covenant. Between, between God and his people. It is poured out as a sacrifice to forgive the sins of many. Mark my words, I will not drink wine again until the day I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. I will share my thoughts with you about the significance of this act by Jesus. God is a covenant honoring God. And we are instructed to do this in memory of him as often as possible. I mulled over this part of scripture and it's very phenomenal. We cannot be in covenant with Jesus if we do not partake of his body and his blood. He knows that we are in we are inclined to sin which is why he wants us to partake of his body and his blood so that our sins may be forgiven but there is a process we must confess those sins 
we must repent and ask him to forgive us. There is forgiveness of sin for those who acknowledge this covenant, those who believe. And brothers and sisters, I encourage each one of us, wherever we may be, not to take lightly this covenant. Before we indulge in taking the, the bread and the blood of Jesus, we need to thoroughly examine our hearts. To help us through the process, can we please bow our heads in prayer? Father, as we humbly present ourselves before you in the mighty name of Jesus, we identify with your son's sacrifice so that our sins could be forgiven. We thank you, Father, that you have provided a better covenant whereby we do not have to make sacrifice daily, weekly, monthly, or annually for as long as we live. Because your son has paid the price once for all time. We bring our sins before you, my God. All of them, the ones that we have committed. And the sins we do not recall. And the sins of omission, where we should have done something and we didn't do it. It is sin to know what we are supposed to do and then not do it. You know our hearts, Father. Cleanse us of any sin so that we can come before you and partake of your son's body and blood. And we know, Father, that once we have done that, our sins are forgiven because the accuser cannot use them against us anymore. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I'm caught up in your presence, And I just want to sit here at your feet. I'm caught up in this holy moment. Oh.
I perceive, say I perceive. Of a truth, this is the truth. That God is no respecter of persons. In every nation, say every nation. He that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. Doesn't matter who you are. If you fear God and you seek after righteousness, you will be accepted to be empowered by God Himself. Hallelujah. So our vision incorporates the principle that the Apostle Peter laid down right at the beginning of the building of the church. You see, Jesus, Jesus didn't just build, start the church and everyone had an idea. No. Jesus gave very specific instructions. That's why the Bible says we must build on the doctrine of the apostles and the prophets. This apostles and prophecy in the Bible. Because sometimes we bring new doctrine in. Sometimes God blesses us with the ministry gift or an office. Even though if God has given me an office, I cannot bring in a new doctrine. Hallelujah. I cannot, no one, it doesn't matter how powerful you are. It doesn't matter how much God use you. You cannot bring a new doctrine into the church. We can only build on the doctrine of the apostles and the prophets. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We can get the revelation how to build. But we are supposed to make sure that we know the doctrine of the apostles and the prophets and lay that foundation you know why because when that foundation is laid then nothing Jesus said I am building my church and the gates of hell shall not be able to prevail against the church who is the church we are the church and when our foundation is solid then the devil, yes, he can come. He can intimidate us. He can oppress. He can try and suppress. He can try and depress. But he cannot succeed in conquering the church of Jesus Christ. That means he cannot succeed in conquering each one of us that are here because we are the church of Jesus Christ. Through all the things, we are more than conquerors. It doesn't matter through what we go, we are more than conquerors. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a mighty hand. <coughs> so, if the Bible say, God is no respect of persons, then we have no right to change the Bible. You know what that means? That means that God believes that there's no distinction in the body of Christ. That means that God believes that everyone has potential. White, black, colored, Indian. Rich, poor, educated, uneducated. Small children, medium children, big children. We all have an opportunity in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. So this is what the church is about. Is to make sure <coughs> that um, our eyes are open. And it doesn't matter where you find yourself. Many people 
find themselves in a situation where they give up on their future. They give up, they say, I will never come right. I've heard people talk like that already. Things won't come right. Well, God is no respect of persons. Things can come right. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. And I close, I just want to read another scripture. <coughs> Galatians chapter 3, 29. Okay, let's read from verse 26. For you are all children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. Say, I'm a child of God. Say, I'm a child of God. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. There is now neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is now neither male nor female. For we are all one in Christ Jesus. And if we are Christ, if we belong to Jesus, then we are also Abraham's seed. And if we Abraham's seed, we are heirs, erfgename, according to the promise of God. So we are as sons of God, are the heirs because Jesus died. And he made a will. A will is his promises, the covenant. But the mighty thing about Jesus is he rose again. And Jesus is watching over his word. To perform it. With mighty signs and wonders following. You see, someone had died that make a will out. And they leave an inheritance they cannot make sure that everything gets carried out. Normally there's a lot of fights with wills. They cannot make sure that every detail is carried out according to the letter. Because they did. But the Bible said Jesus watches over his word to perform it. So everything that you have to receive and I have to receive. Jesus Christ is watching over us to make sure that we're going to receive these things. That's why it's important for us as your leaders to direct you correctly to be able to receive your inheritance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Physically, spiritually, financially, emotionally. And that's the other part of the vision of the church is that we make no distinction. We say with certainty, according to the word of God, that God is not the respect of person. And we say that if you have accepted Jesus, then you are equally important than the next person that have accepted Jesus. Hallelujah. And we say that we all have an equal opportunity to reach our potential in different areas. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So what we are to do as we move along, all the programs, all the teachings, is designed by the Lord to lead us and to develop us from level to level and from glory to glory whether it be your talents your gifts 
whether it be in the business realm, whether it be on the spiritual realm, whether it be in the arts and the song. Hallelujah. It's to develop you. That's the role of the church. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God used all types of people. He used Moses. He used David. Paul, murderer. He used a little boy to feed the multitudes. He used the apostles, educated and uneducated. He used the rich, he used the poor. There's no distinction with God. God can do miracles for all of us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's raise our hands. Say, dear Lord Jesus, I thank you. I'm your child. I'm an heir of all the promises that you've given in your word. And thank you, Jesus. While I stay in you, connected with you, I believe this morning that I will achieve my potential in the spiritual realm, in the financial realm, in the physical realm, and in the emotional realm. Thank you, Jesus. You've made a provision and you are able to fulfill every promise to me, Lord. I thank you this morning for your blessing upon my life. As I grow in my faith, so I will grow in my level. I believe I will go from level to level. I will go from glory to glory. I do not consider the past. I do not consider my circumstances. But I believe your word, Lord, as the final authority over my life in Jesus' name. The name of Jesus. I thank you for the victory. In Jesus' name. Oh, we worship you, worship you, worship you, worship you. Oh, we speak the authority of God over this place, over this airways, over this ministry, over this property. Oh, Koro Yomosa, over this team. Oh, Koro Yomosa, Kiliyamasa. Oh, Jesus, come and show up, show up, show up in the people's homes as they watch this, God. Show up, show up, heal the blind eyes, heal the brokenhearted. Let their deaf ears open up in the name of Jesus. Let cancer be disappeared in the name of Jesus. Every spirit of divorce in the airwaves, we disrupt it and we dismantle it in the name of Jesus. We use this platform. We use this platform. We may not like it, but we will use it to disembark the plans of Satan over the people's lives watching. Hey, we break it, we break it, we break it. We command you to break. We command you to break in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Divorce. Be broken in the name of Jesus. Sickness. Be broken in the name of Jesus. Oh, family troubles, family problems. Oh, we bind you in the name of Jesus. We bind you in the name of Jesus. Over the things of God, we bind you, you spirit of confusion. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every pastor, every leader, every pastor, every leader. Father, watching the broadcast, God, I bind every timid spirit, every spirit of timidity. We bind you in the name of Jesus. I declare that every man of God and woman of God will rise up and do the work that you have called them to do. I speak Isaiah 61 and 2 over their lives. Oh, we want to die. We want to die. We want to die. We want to die. And we will do your work. We will do your work. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, we bind every spirit of financial lack, emotional lack, 
over the people of God. We bind you in the name of Jesus. We speak overflow. 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 Hey, Karayama Sarayama Sa. We speak overflow. Father. So Father, we want to thank you for the service today. We want to thank you for how you have moved among us, oh God. In the name of Jesus, thank you for your word that there was ministered. Thank you, Father God, for that praise and for that worship that we could lift you up wherever we are in our lives, Father, physically, emotionally, spiritually. Father, we thank you that you are going to change and transform our lives and do mighty Miracles, signs and wonders following in the name of Jesus. And so, Father, I pray that from this very day that you will deliver us from all evil, Father God. And, Lord, that you will prepare us for this week that we will go out and we will do your work. We will do your will, Father, in the name of Jesus. And nothing will hold us back. Nothing will stop us because the work of God and the will of God will go forward. So I pray for everyone watching this as we close the service now, God, that you will come and show yourself strong, the refuge and the strong tower that you are in Jesus' mighty name. We love you. Please feel free to contact us on the telephone number appearing at the bottom of the screen if you'd like to get involved with our outreaches this week, any of the programs, any of our missions. Please feel free to join us. We love you. God bless you.